Well guys, it's cold, it's snowy, it's the middle of winter, we're north of Chicago, the vehicles are filthy, we're going to get the garage closed up. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've done a little branding and we are now the outdoor channel. Don't worry, we're doing all kinds of truck mods and stuff too, actually. If you look back there, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on the workbench there we're going to be doing. So if you like the kind of content, outdoor stuff, truck mods, all that good stuff, hit the subscribe button. Now today we're going to be looking at our boat and let's get started. All right, so we're back inside. It's just way too cold out. We got the door closed. But this is my Lund 1750 Rebel XS Sport. Yes, it's a mouthful. We'll go over what all that means here in just a moment. But I want to go over the things that make this boat just absolutely fantastic. A couple things that I wish were improved upon a little bit. And of course, some of the modifications we made over the last couple years of having the boat. The 1750 is the length of the boat. Most manufacturers have this or something very similar. So this boat is 17 foot, six inches, or 17 and a half feet, which is where you get the 1750. Why they call it 1750 instead of 175, I don't know. This is what Lund does. Rebel is one of Lund's long standing names they've had for a lot of years. They've had some bigger Rebels. They've had some smaller ones. This is one of the larger ones. We'll go over that again in a, in a moment here. The XS really goes by a couple different names, not just by people, but actually by Lund itself. Uh, sometimes they refer to it as extra sport, sometimes they refer to it as extra seating, and we'll show you that as well. So we'll start out here, and some of the things I really, really love about the boat, one of them is this color. This is known as Lund Red. Uh, they actually stopped making this particular version of red uh, a couple years ago. They now have a Heritage Red, which is a little brighter, but this dark red is my opinion, really, really sharp. It shows off in the sun really, really well. I know we're in the garage now. I'll try to get a little closer in, but the camera's probably not picking it up, but it's got all kinds of little sparkly stuff in there, which really shows really well in the sun. So that's probably one of the things I really enjoy about it. Uh, the Lund logo, it's just a logo, but I think they did a pretty good job with it. it. Looks pretty sharp. One of the things I didn't like, or really two of the things I didn't like out here, one of them is kind of a big deal, one of them's not. I didn't care for how Lund's font was here in the back. My wife's into cricketing and all that fun stuff, so I had her make some nice letters for me. And I had him do it here in the, in the front, pardon me, the back, as well as the front. You see, they match in the same font, they're the same length. She was a little bit of a beginner, so you can see where there's a couple little errors there where we had to kind of work through, but it's the same color as the rest of the Lund logo. And it came out really nice, so that was you know, a quick, easy thing to do. The second thing that was kind of a big deal is this right here. This is the gunnel. As you can see, I got some black stuff on here, and this is actually a Linux truck bed liner. Now, there's kind of two big companies out there when it comes to bed liners. Rhino Liner is one of them. Linux is the other. They're both very, very good. In my particular neck of the woods, I've got Linux. I've used them in all my trucks in the past, and they've been... Well, flawless, and they have a good warranty and all that stuff. The problem we had is with a Rebel, which is normally a little bit smaller boat for Lund, is they don't put any kind of rub rail on this. It's just bare painted metal. And with some of the docks I have here, it's just, uh, well, it gets beat up very, very easily. The fenders don't cover the dock with the particular dock height that we have over here. They're really meant more for, more for pontoons. So I had to do something. I tried putting some rubber and some other things on here. It didn't really work out so well. So I came up with this idea. I spent 400 bucks and we lined it 
I can still access the track here in the bottom, which is for accessories and the, the travel cover. We can still get the sport track here in the side without any issues. And you can see I got my fender um, mount there. If I go up to the front here, I've got a couple of sport track accessories. That's a cup holder, as well as this mount here. So it works really, really well. It keeps the boat protected. And uh, I just wish Lund did something a little bit better uh, coming from the factory. Now, the model that replaced this is a Lund Adventure. And they got a 1675 and a 1775. They still make Rebels. They're a little bit smaller. Uh, and it's not an XS, it's an XL. Slightly different configuration. Uh, I think on the Adventure, there is an option to put a, a small rubber gunnel along the side here. I think that's something that's kind of new. On the business end, we have a Mercury four-stroke. This particular one's a 90 horse. And what I can tell you is after four years of, of having the boat, going through four seasons of big water, little water, uh, the motor has been absolutely bulletproof. I've got the prop off at the moment. You guys get the idea. This boat actually has a capacity for a 115. That's not true at all, Rebel. Some of them only go up to 60. Others have 90, depending on the model that you have. This one actually can go up to 115. And the difference between the 115 and the 90, there's a small price increase. Uh, prices change all the time, so you could check your dealer. But it's really about a couple of miles an hour. If I could go back in time, I would probably get the 115 because I'm always trying to, you know, go a little faster, do a little more with the boat. But quite honestly, this 90 has been, like I said, bulletproof, rock solid. Uh, generally, depending on how I have the boat loaded up, if it's just me or me and a bunch of people, depending on how much gear I have on there, I'm generally, depending on the body of watermen and what the conditions are, I'm between 38, you know, and 42 miles an hour with, with the 90. So plenty fast. Uh, plenty of powerful I get uh, we don't ski but we get you know tubers that we have and uh, we get them up on plane very very quickly I run I think I got a shot of it over here a mercury spitfire four blade prop probably at the best shop I got in the corner sorry about that uh, that thing gets this thing up on plane super quick and oddly enough you know four blade is usually known for getting the boat up on plane a three blade is usually known for speed Again, I can get over 40 miles an hour with that four blade, so it's been pretty good. Well, starting at the back of the boat, I added the aft jump seats. This wasn't installed by the factory, but I did order it through Lund. Uh, the dealer installed it for me. I think it was like five or 550 bucks for jump seats, but it's fantastic because as you can see, it adds two more seats. Uh, they're relatively comfortable, a couple extra cup holders, uh, and it doesn't take away anything from the boat. And what's nice about this is it converts to a really nice aft casting deck. All you have to do, close that. There's a little latch if you want to do that. Same on the other side here. There's a really nice heavy duty handle. And just drop that in. So if you got a boat like this, this is a fantastic option. I have two more seat pedestals here. I actually have all the seats and stuff there. So I actually have six seats for the back, uh, two of them that'll go here. And although I can't open and close with the seats there, I can put the seats in here while this is closed. I still have four back here behind the cockpit and, uh, you know, have the full casting deck if I want. But this thing is, it's massive. It's huge for a boat this size. You see, you got a seat pedestal base. There's an option to add a ski pylon. I don't have that in this. But this brings up two more mods that I've done uh, that I, think are fantastic. The first one is a splash pan insert. That's that guy right there. So the splash pan is just where water and things can collect and then there's a discharge out the back there. This basically sits over that. Uh, it's a press fit. All I do is give you a couple of bolts. You can put that in if you want, but the press fits worked the last couple of years. It hasn't moved at all. Uh, still accommodates your lines to your motor. And it gives you about a, another square foot of cast index space up here. The other thing that's really, really great about it is if you're over the edge there and you're in the water and you got to work on your transducers, you got something that's a lot more easier to kneel on and work from uh, if you got to service those things, and I've had to do that. So that's one of them. The second one was actually a little bit smaller. If you look inside these cup holders, 
There's a little screw right there. I got one on the other one there too. Tommy, what's that for? Well, what was happening was every time I would open and close this thing and maybe do something like that, those cup holders, <laughs> they'd fall out. The first season I had the boat, not a big deal. Uh, you know, they kind of press fit in there pretty well. But after a season or two of doing that, these things would fall out. I tried using some Gorilla Glue and uh, it worked for a few months and then it really didn't take. So all this is, is a drywall anchor, sometimes referred to as a molly, those little plastic things that expand as you put the screw in. Push that through, pop a stainless screw in. So when a stainless screw goes in, that molly opens up and keeps this from popping out. And if you ever gotta take it out, you just pull the screw out and you can take it out, no big deal. So that was a huge win and something that was really simple and easy to do. We go over to the port side. I added the Lund Rod Stow and Go, I think that's what it's called. Basically what it is is a couple of rod tubes that's up here and a strap that lays across this deck here. And you could put eight foot rods on this if you really wanted to. And it's just Velcro. Oops, if I get my fingers to work. You guys get the idea, you open that up, I'm doing it one handed here. Put your rosin there, you got a couple tubes there, works out really, really well. You know, if you gotta go up and get to a base somewhere, you wanna just throw them in there real quick, you don't want them rolling around the boat, really easy to do. I think this kit was actually for an impact, but as you can see, it works on a rebel, and I'm sure it would work on an adventure as well. Now the console is pretty much a standard line, you get the three gauges which is sufficient. I kind of wish I had a trim gauge on here, but after, again, a few years of having the boat, it's really not been a big deal. I can usually trim it out without even thinking about it. I don't have it here at the moment because it's winter time again, and I don't want to have the electronics out here in the cold, but I usually have a Helix 7 there with a GPS on it. Two-way radio, and uh, you know, it's got the weather and all that stuff on there. Snow risk Northwest Indiana, Friday through Sunday. And uh, even here in the garage with the door closed and that simple antenna that stair, you know, I get perfect reception in here. This is really cool. So I have the Mercury Mobile Vessel View and I'll snap a little screenshot on there what that is. I basically can mount my cell phone here. I can't do it at the moment because I'm using it to record this video, but I can put it here, these spring-loaded guides, you know, really keep the phone in place. I've been out in some big water, some big waves. The phone's not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, I can take video. I can take pictures. I can use my Mercury mobile app. I can basically do whatever I want. It's right here, right where I need it. Should my GPS ever go bad, you know, or have some kind of malfunction, you know, as long as I am, you know, have some kind of cell service, I can pull up some kind of map here, you know, Google Maps or, or whatever have you, Navionics. Uh, and have that right there. So this works really good. This is just a simple ram mount. This little B mount I got down here. I uh, kind of wanted to see, but the mount comes with a, or the arm comes with a B rather, and you know, that's what's there. The last thing I think I did up here that was really, really cool is this came with a manual bilge only. It's dry, I don't want to sit there and run that. But I wired in a auto bilge, uh, Johnson uh, bilge uh, pump, excuse me, switch. Um, that was like 40 bucks or something. And uh, where I go up near the Canadian border, and we'll do some videos on that later this year, uh, it's called Rainy Lake. And it rains, at least most years. It didn't rain so much this year. And, uh, you know, sometimes it does that in the middle of the night. And I've literally have come out in the morning, and this deck has two inches of water on it. I mean, it's rained that much. Well, I put that auto bilge in there, and it just pumps it out as you expect. And, you know, it, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. It works out really, really good. So going into storage, this boat's just got a ton of it. The side is actually meant for a rod locker, but I was able to repurpose it. And I've got towels, I've got my running lights, I've got my paddle and boat hook, the pump, first aid, emergency, bail, fire extinguisher, all the good stuff in here. It's just huge, but if I didn't have all this, I think you could put you know over eight foot rods in here 
it, uh, it's really, really nice storage. So that was a big win. This, of course, is the battery. Oh, here's another mod I did. I added a charger for the starting battery. I've never actually had to use it, uh, except a couple times in the winter I will you know, plug it in and let it give it a trickle charge and keep the battery healthy. But um, there's another one for you. This storage here is, well, it goes all the way back there. I got a prop back there. and These are actually ammo cans that I use for toolboxes. Works out really, really well. And a block there to take the prop on and off. Here's the prop. I was telling you guys about it earlier. This storage, I think, is too small. One I don't like about the boat. I've got things kind of shoved in there and in uh, large or extra large Ziploc bags. So some rain gear, some extra jackets and hats, things like that. Honestly, I get it. You know, you're getting close to the controls, but they certainly could have made that one a little bigger. Another one that I like and I don't like. This is a rod locker. So you get this in a Rebel XS. You get it in an Adventure. You don't get it in a Rebel XL. But it's one of the things that makes the XS the XS. Now what's really, really cool about it is, well, you got a rod locker. What's not great about it is only for five rods. I got a net there and I got four other holes basically, or I could take the net out and get five rods in there. The Adventure, they made a correction there and, or an improvement rather, and now that holds 10 and that's a lot better. And again, the, the Rebel XL, you don't have it at all. So, okay, cool. I got a rod locker. I really do use it. The other thing I don't really like about it, and I think they fixed it in the Adventure, is this panel is really, really hard to take on and off because you can put two more batteries in there and a big one, 29 size batteries for your trolling motor and a relatively small or medium size uh, charger will fit in there. And you can see I got the cords that come out there. Um, you can run them out through the bottom here, which is okay. Uh, there's another option where you can put on the other side of the console here. So again, it's good. I could put rods here. There's a spot for me to put uh, my trolling batteries that's out of the way and a charger, but it's only five rods and that panel is really, really hard to get in and out. I've seen videos of guys taking struts out to get to it a little easier, that's a pain. You can do it without taking the struts out, but it's just, it's a weird angle to try to lift that thing out and do all this. And you know, it's just as hard to put it back in. Aside from that, this glove box, let me switch seats here. This is a good one. Ha <laughs> ha, got away from me. It's massive. I mean, it, it, it goes all the way, it goes all the way down here. You get these cubbies for life jackets and other stuff in here. I'm, literally, I think I have, you know, between the cubby, I got a life jacket here, which is inflatable. I got four life jackets here. I've got three more here. I've got the, uh, the boat cushion for a throwable in there. I mean, it's just, there is a lot of storage, even though it's got a couple flaws in it. There's other storage up here. This one on the side here is the live well most uh, i think all the rebels have a live well up here on the adventure they put it in the back it's it works i've had some pretty big fish in here it can be a little tight depending on how big of a fish you get you know i've gotten some you know 30 to 40 inch northerns they fit but it's it gets tight real quick when you got that size of fish in here here's all my ropes anchors, bow lines. It's not a really wide compartment, but it's really, really deep, so you can put a lot of stuff in there. And then I've got these couple of compartments up here. Obviously, you've got the seat pedestal base. I've got three of these bags in here and a bunch of loose items. There's one here, there's one on the other side, and there's one actually in the middle. This is a pass-through. It goes all the way under. Doors are a little stiff, as you can see. Uh, usually okay because they're not flopping around in the waves and stuff like that. And then you have your anchor storage, which I really just put my foot pedal for my uh, trolling motor up there. The other mod I did, and I think I showed this a little while ago, this is a stabilizer bar. I got the Minn Kota version. Just set that on the uh, on a Lund Sport Track mount, and it works really, really good. 
rubber, very durable, easy to take on and off. Of course, now that I'm on camera, I'm having a hard time with it. There it goes. And uh, there's a little pin right here. You can pull that and this arm will, will swing you know, all the way down to the bottom if you need it to. Wrapping up the bow, I keep a Helix 5 here. I wish I had something bigger, but that's kind of what I ended up getting. I uh, got them on it to a transducer, and I put a ram mount and a ram cable hider, which is this guy right down there. That base looks a little bigger. Uh, that was like 15 bucks for that or something. And uh, it hides the wires very, very nicely. This is a Minn Kota power drive trolling motor. Uh, it's been near rock solid. I mean, it, it fires right up, it goes. This one's only a 55 pound. For this boat, I will tell you that it's sufficient. Uh, I should also add it's a 12 volt. Uh, the boat's not that big, it's not that heavy. If you're just trolling around, trolling around a bay uh, for part of the day, plenty of power, it moves you around. If you've got a small current, again, it'll do just fine. You've got a medium or heavy current, uh, it's gonna struggle. You got a lot of current, forget it. It's, it's not gonna do any good. So something to keep in mind. It works, it's efficient. Uh, I usually troll with the big motor, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, and occasionally use this guy. But if you're using a trolling motor a lot, I would upgrade to a Tarova and maybe a 24 volt. Before I forget, there is one thing that did happen to the motor. About, I think it was around the second season, so it was out of warranty already. And that was the transducer that's built in a unit failed. I'm not really sure what happened. It, it worked one day and then it didn't work. Messed with the, you know, with the Helix. You know, really didn't change any settings, but I tried changing settings to troubleshoot. It couldn't get anything there. Messed with the cables, tried to new cables and stuff. Didn't work. The only thing I can conclude is, you know, transducer failed, uh, you know, after two seasons. I ended up running a transducer out the back of the boat for a graph that's in the front of the boat, which is, you know, not the best, but it does work. It gives me an idea of what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, something to keep in mind. Um, otherwise, the unit's been rock solid. One more thing I did add, another mod, is this unit doesn't have iPilot. Um, and, again, I don't use it a ton, so I don't need the iPilot. Um, so I did get the Hummingbird, excuse me, Minn Kota Copilot. And that's this guy right here. Uh, I know I got some glare here. Hopefully the camera's focusing on it. It's a very simple unit. I was up at the Milwaukee Sport Fishing Show, um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They do it every March, I think, uh, a couple years back. Uh, I think I picked this up for about 150, 160 bucks, something like that. Uh, and it's just a very simple one fob unit, and it's just what you see here. Uh, I don't have the unit plugged in, but basically you have an on or off. Uh, you have a faster, slower, and you have a directional side to side. So, you know, no deploy or anything like that, but you can, once it's deployed, you can be anywhere in the boat, you can be any outside of the boat. <laughs> I haven't tested the range, but, you know, certainly anywhere inside the boat or just outside the boat works just fine. And you can steer. Basically, you can still use a foot pedal, but you can use this as an alternate. So a lot of times I'm trolling with the big motor, you know, and I can use this and have it around my neck with, has a lanyard on there. And, uh, you know, I can steer the boat. Or I can stop the motor and just, you know, turn the turn this motor on and steer the boat. Like I said, make it faster, slower, go to side to side. It does work really, really well. All right, guys, so that kind of wraps things up. We have a ton of content coming this year. We've got more stuff, of course, for boating and fishing. We've got a ton of truck mods coming up for 2022. We have a new project truck for 2022. Uh, we got a couple weeks booked up in Canada for fishing and camping and things like that that we're going to be doing videos on and, uh, you know, and so much more. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, notification button. It helps the channel out quite a bit.